So responsive design is one of the core fundamentals of building an application in Bubble. It has to do with how your app will look on different screen sizes. So if I'm viewing it on a monitor versus a tablet versus an iPad versus a phone, and keep in mind that there are different sizes of phones, tablets, monitors, etc., how will the app look and function? And our goal is to make it look and function very nicely on all of these different screens. So there are a couple of things with responsive design, and one is this thing called container layout. Let's backtrack a bit. Responsive design has to do with these containers over here. And right now I am using a group. So as I was saying, container layout, right now we're looking at row, and I will get back to this in a sec. But what I really want to focus on right now is container alignment. As you can see, this group inside this group is currently left aligned. If I click here, centered, you can see that it goes to the center. If I click right, it goes to the right. This is called space around and then a space between, but those two are better illustrated when we have two. Right now it's space between. It means that the space in between here, in between each group is the same. Right now, if we click on this group, we can see that there is some gray border around it. That is padding over here. And we can just remove that and this will go all the way up to the top of the group, but I'm going to add that back in. Also, we can look at space around and we can see that the space over here is double the space in between the edge of the padding to this first group. We also see that if we left align all three blocks, there is this nice spacing in between and that is our column gap. So if we remove that, all of them are right up next to each other. I'm just going to add that back in. So now let's look at these groups. Right now, they are fixed with a fixed 250 by 250. I can increase this to 350, and we can see that change reflected here. I can also go ahead and uncheck this fixed width. And I could give it a min width, or I could just remove that altogether. And this group will push out and take up all of the remaining space. We can illustrate this better if we remove this. We can see that that group has stretched to cover the rest of the space. And if we remove this, we see that same thing going on here. We can do the same for the height, but we will cover that in a bit. One last thing, let's just go back to giving this a fixed width. We can, let's actually make that smaller. We can also change its vertical alignment. So we can put it in the center and we can put it at the bottom. I'm just throwing a lot of information to you, but I promise as we look at more examples and as you start to build, this will become very intuitive. So now let's look at this. I have a group with 32 row and column gap, as well as some padding. And right now it is center aligned. This group has no min width and no max width. So if we remove this, we can see that it stretches. I'm just going to add that back in so we can look at these. A group, inside a group, inside a group. Right now, these have a min height, but no max height. So if I were to stretch this, we would see that grow. And then currently no min width or max width, but its parent group does have padding in between, which is why we don't see these mush into each other. That's why when we remove this, this one grows because it doesn't have a fixed width and it gives these ones more space to expand into and they split that space evenly. We can apply the same principles to columns. Right now, this one has got a min width of 100, and that can, if it's a fixed width, we can see that it just 
is 100, but if we uncheck that box, it expands to take up the majority thing. We can also put a max width on it, so it would only expand to 200 or 100 in this case. Let's just remove that. It's also got no min height and no max height, so we can see it's stretching to use the whole container. We can add more. And it keeps dividing up the space evenly because all of these have no min and max height. We can see the same controls for columns. Center aligned, bottom aligned, space around, and space between. We can also, on these groups, change it from the left side to the middle to the right side. Over here, we have a column with this inside. We can see that this currently has no min width or max width or min height or max height. So when we add stuff in, it keeps dividing. But this does have a minimum height. So this won't collapse to less than 150, which is what it's at right now. But right now, this is a row. So if we copy paste this, you can see that it keeps dividing horizontally, and these don't have a min or max width. So here we're looking at our container layout, and right now it's set to align to parent, which means that over here we don't see our typical controls. But on the thing itself, we see this grid, and we can move it relative to the parent. So if I increase the size of the parent, it will always stay to the top left corner of the parent. And here is something that we use very rarely. It is a fixed container. So to help better convey the topic of responsive design and how to do this in Bubble, I'm going to show you how someone would go about building some of these popular apps on Bubble responsively. So let's look at Airbnb. Right now, this header would be a big group, and within that, there would be a group that is in the center. We have one group over here, which has got the logo, which is an image, I suppose. A group in the center, which has got this little thing going on, and then a group on the side, which is a row that is holding these things. Now, if we look at it, I didn't draw it perfectly, but the space from here to here is roughly the space from here to here. So we would use space between to build something like this. Similarly, we can see that this is just one big group and all of these elements are equally spaced apart. So we would again use space between. Let's look at something a little different. This whole screen would be one giant repeating group. Each repeating group cell would have a column aligned group and that has this image, this row which has got this text and then also this rating space between, this text element, this one as well, and this one. Okay, let's look at Redfin. Since we already dissected the other head header, let's just look at this. So this would be a right center aligned element within a aligned to parent group. This is a column. We've got a text element here, a text element here, a row with a bunch of text elements that are spaced between, and then another row with this input, and then also this little icon on the side. Let's look at this hero section. This is one big group in the middle. Half of it is composed of this image, and the other half is a group with some padding on the side and then it's a column with these text elements and the button aligned to the middle of the column. 
So I hope this helps you kind of think about the thought process that goes behind stacking these elements so that they look how you want on different screen sizes. And we'll get a lot more practice with this throughout the course.